New book explores Darwinian racism then and now. And so this is a um, brand new book by Richard Weikert called Darwinian Racism, How Darwinism Influenced Hitler, Nazism, and White Nationalism. And so basically what he's going to make very, very clear in this book, which we have said multiple times over here at, an uh, multiple times here at Answers in Genesis, is that evolution is really the foundation, um, foundational ideas, foundational beliefs. And what we see with Hitler is just a way in which he carried those beliefs out um, because he believed that certain races were inferior and certain races were superior. And that whole idea comes from eugenics, which is founded on evolution, right? Eugenics That's what Darwin means, believed. Right, well-born or mm -hmm. good in birth. And Darwin very much believed that. He had a cousin, Francis Galton, who was considered the father mm -hmm. of eugenics, okay? And so these ideas were promoted in Europe, but then they came to America. They were very heavily promoted here in America which kept feeding what Hitler did. Now, I'm not saying Hitler isn't culpable. Obviously, he is. Right. But, but he was buying wholly into these ideas and saying, I believe I'm superior and these people are inferior, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, some evolutionists I've read point out that, okay, just because this idea of um, racism like just because evolution can be used to justify racism, that doesn't mean evolution is factually false, as in like Darwin was wrong. But that's not actually the point of the argument here. There's many other lines of reason and logic and observation that show evolution is factually like not true in the sense of one kind evolving into another and ultimately humans and some humans being more evolved than other. Yeah. But the point here is just to show that this idea that humans evolved apart from God's word, it, it opens the door. It is logically consistent with all these atrocities mm -hmm. like racism. It doesn't, not only does it provide you a foundation for thinking in a racist way, but it also doesn't provide you a foundation for morals and for human value to prevent you from doing things like hol the holocausts in response to that racist ideology. Yeah. So the point is that um, not only is evolution a lie, but it is a very socially destructive lie, and that's what this book is showing. I often challenge people, if evolution were true, how could you argue consistently and logically that Hitler was wrong? Yeah. I mean, bear in mind, if evolution is true and there is no God, then there are no moral absolutes. Might does make right. And if it makes you happy, why not do it? This made Hitler happy. Who, dare, who are you to impinge on his happiness? What makes him happy? Right? That's his worldview. Also, in evolutionary thinking, some people would be better than others. Some are more evolved than others. And I bet if you ask Hitler, he probably would tell you he thought he was doing humanity a favor. Yeah getting rid of the weaker races so humanity can evolve to this next level for the good of humanity. Yeah. Now, he was dead wrong. And I'm not saying that's what all evolutionists believe. I'm saying that's where mm -hmm. the thinking does go if you follow it through yeah. to its logical conclusion. Ideas have consequences and bad ideas yeah. have victims. And we see this even today. I mean, these ideas, if you think, oh, they went away with Hitler or they went away with the demise of eugenics, eugenics is still around. Right. It just is carried out in different forms. Things like prenatal genetic screening or things like look at where Planned Parenthood... Um, um, offices are typically located. Right. Okay, they're typically located in very minority communities because they are still trying to carry out these principles. They just call it something different and they do it differently, but they're still doing it because, again, that idea is still prevalent because the idea of evolution is still prevalent. So we're still seeing that. Okay. Secret of lizard camouflage, a simple mathematical equation. Okay, I'm a biologist, not a mathematician, so I don't normally get excited about articles that have to do with math. But <laughs> since this one also combines it with biology, I think it's pretty cool that these um, lizards, as they get older, you can see the beautiful pattern that they develop that are different colors. And so how does it, basically they're trying to figure out how does it do this, right? How does it create this pattern on itself? And so um, they, it came down to basically, quote unquote, a simple mathematical equation as to how the scales are different colors at different places and they're different on different lizards, but it ideally camouflages them for their environment. So where did the mathematical equation come from and why is it applied in a biological context for the, mm -hmm. for the coloration of lizards, right? right? Right, exactly. And I love the fact they call it a simple mathematical equation, but it says here, <laughs> a multidisciplinary team of scientists had to work together to come up with the understanding of this <laughs> complex distribution of scales and this simple equation. Yeah. 
Yes, it just shows you, well, first of all, God's glory. And also the fact that um, you can apply math to understanding the scales on a lizard shows yep. you that we live in an orderly, predictable universe, which was created by a logical God. Yep. A strictly immaterial universe shouldn't have, or a strictly material universe shouldn't have immaterial concepts like logic and math that work like this. And um, also, we have a really cool article on our website. It's called uh, Math and God. It was from Answers Magazine. And it's it shows how basically math points to God, because back in the day, um, say the ancient Greeks and some of the people like that actually worshipped math thinking that it could be the source of absolute truth but then later there is this uh, mathematician Kurt uh, Godel, a logician and he proved um, this undecidability theorem he called it so that was basically showing that math can't be its own foundation for existence it can't mm -hmm. be the source of truth it must apply or it must appeal to something outside of itself right, so as right. Christians we recognize that would be God as the ultimate truth and the authority for truth and the source of truth and of mathematical laws and that sort mm -hmm. of thing but if you don't have have God in your thinking, you end up in this like vicious cycle of, well, maybe math is just a human invention, but then why does the universe follow mathematical right, principles right, that we exactly. can even see in the scales That's of the lizard? Right. So it's very cool. And they, and you know, they talk about in the article, well, how, I mean, they're observing this, right? And they're figuring this out, but then they talk about how could this, you know, talking about this was selected in the course of evolution. And I'm kind of like, so what happened to the lizard before it developed this? And they just all died. This? Yeah, they all died, yeah. right? So, I mean, if this is about camp, Camouflage. I'm not sure how it could do it in a stepwise fashion and survive all of that. They're so. just really good mathematicians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So just one uh, uh, resource here before we leave. Um, the gender and marriage war, we talked again about a lot of those types of issues mm -hmm. um, with gender uh, that we address here in the book. And so I encourage you to get that to really have those solid answers, both from a biblical as well as a biological perspective. So we are out of time for today. So we'll see you back on Wednesday. Have a good one.